Mm -hmm. Hey, YouTube. Don't y'all get mad. <clears throat> Don't y'all get mad. Now, I just want to ask a question. Y'all here? And we're live? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Bing. Uh, a Marie M computer was kind of tripping for a minute there. So I finished the uh, Madam C.J. Walker series and I recommend it to anybody. I think it's a great series. So it is actually the whole story is told in four episodes. OK, so my big question is this. We all know that a lot of black folks now or women wear wigs and a few men even actually wear man units <laughs> but why do we uh, I, the way their show is portrayed those women all of them had this thick 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 hair so my question is if their product worked so well i mean it made her a millionaire in 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 the early 1900s where nobody was a millionaire no black people were millionaires that's for sure and no certainly no black women were millionaires it made her so rich because the product worked so well right so all through that show, we see people with this long, 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 long hair. All of the salespeople with long, long, long hair. So my question is, how do we get, if it works that well, did it work that well for one thing? And did, is the product still available? And then uh, why did we end up turning to wigs? Now, I usually don't get in women's business. I know people do what they want to do. I'm not a woman. I don't understand anything. But uh, I am curious. Cause I thought the main reason people were were all these uh, these wigs and these weaves and things was because the hair wouldn't grow. I could be wrong. It just could just be a matter of texture and hairstyles. I don't know, but we seem to be really into it. What do you guys think? Uh, Talika, hi Talika, Annette, <laughs> hey Nikki, Sarah Davenport. You guys don't get mad at me. I'm just asking the question though. My, my mother had short hair. My mother was a real light skin, but she always had a problem with short hair. And I remember her using hair care, those products, right? But I don't remember her having all this luxurious, lovely flowing hair either. So I don't know, but I think it's a curious thing. Why do we wear wigs? Well, I shouldn't say we. Why do women wear wigs now? If, if, if growing hair is that easy. Are you all saying hello? I love you, but nobody's answering the question. Are you? <laughs> I must be going stir crazy. <laughs> Staying inside. Okay. <laughs> Has anybody on here ever used these products? Apparently, I was watching Nick at Night today, and she was giving a history on these hair care products. And she was saying that at the time that these women came up with these products, her and the woman, the light-skinned woman, the woman they portrayed as the light-skinned woman, they weren't uh, uh, they're all that original. They just had better sales, so forth, and they, uh, she added a, a better scent to it, which is how most hair you know, products are. They're all basically the same thing, right? Anyway, have you guys ever tried this stuff and has it actually worked on your heads? Yeah, it was an inspirational story. It was about business more than anything else. But I just noticed that everybody had this long, beautiful hair. I, I mean, I said, well, damn, why mess with a wig? If you can do it like that. Hey, Tim Blaine. Hey, Chocolate Bay. Many women I know wear as a protective a protective style. I mean, some of the wigs are great. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a woman. The wigs allow for versatility. Okay. So it's just about a style. You can just change your hairstyle in an instant. That makes sense. Thank you, Haitian princess. And I guess you, you get different textures of hair and so forth. But I'm just curious, uh, was that really a miracle drug? I'm, I'm wondering about all these bald head black men. There's a whole lot of black men. They're not just shaving their heads just for, for fashion. It's mostly because they've lost their hair. They're balding. So would something like that work on a man? 
I had a Jerry Curl in the 80s. <laughs> I couldn't have grown no hair for no Jerry Curl. I used to be jealous of people, men that can grow hair. Now, I noticed that an awful lot of young black kids, though, are wearing their hair. I mean, they've got dreads that are down to here, you know. So I guess back in the old days, that would have been a big, huge afro, like Jackson 5 or the Silvers that everybody had a lot of long hair. But I always assumed it was just jeans. I always thought of uh, uh, hair growing products as being just uh, scams. You got good hair, James? Okay. So do you cut it short, James? But they're, they're, men wear big styles. They wear braids. And they wear um, jerry curl. I mean, not jerry curl. Dreads. I want to see Maddie without the wigs. Maddie without the wigs? She could probably come up with a cute little uh, short hairstyle. Mm -hmm. uh, no. So is that company still in? in, in uh, it's, this is from the early 1900s. So it had been a long, long, long time ago. But if to, to me, if that was the answer to growing hair, I don't know why it would go out of business or why it would change. Uh, okay. Groupon Girl Beautiful Disaster was inspired by the book. Locks do prove that we can grow hair all the way down. Yeah, some people got long, long braids and long dreadlocks, that's for sure. I guess, is it mostly just jeans, though? Your grandmama had long hair, and, and your mama had long hair, and now you got long hair in the jeans. But can you actually alter that by a uh, hair care product? Yeah, so they, uh, I mean, it wasn't exactly what happened. I guess people are proving that, that certain things didn't happen. They embellished quite a bit. You know, that's what happens when you try to condense the whole life into uh, a couple of hours. That's what the series was. I guess it was four four episodes, so four hours. Yeah, uh, Nick at Night was saying that it was about, it was the treatments. It wasn't just the product. That they had certain uh, shampoos they washed regularly and scalp massage and uh, and and the product, which is basically the product that a lot of other uh, hair care products had in common. Her story was a more of a story of good business rather than an ingenious product, I think. Attain length. Okay. I do not like how they portray any. Annie Malone, which one was Annie Malone? That, that was the, let me see, she was the first and Madam C.J. Walker was taught under Annie with Probo products. Her building still exists. Okay, so Annie was the uh, was the girl that supposedly in the story, she stole her, her, her uh, I didn't see that in the story. I saw her trying to sell the other woman's product and the other woman's product working for her but they didn't show her actually stealing their ingredients or anything like that. Some people are saying that those, those ingredients were circulated a lot, but it was a, more of a process. That's why she had hair salons where these women would have their scalps massaged and, and cleaned, deeply cleaned and all that. But the movie just made it seem like it was uh, the product itself. To me, it sounded like a wonderful product. Now, I wonder if a, if a bald-headed man was spinning that on his on his brain, it would also grow his hair. Okay. Yeah, I enjoyed the series, though. It's too bad. It was too sad that apparently she, at the end of her life, uh, she had kidney problems, which which today would mean she would be on dialysis. And then eventually she would get a kidney transplant. But in the 1900s, I guess there was no treatment, no cure for uh, kidney disease. So one of her things, her big things was she wanted uh, an heir. So she only had one daughter and her daughter turned out to be a lesbian, according to this, to this show. And uh, 
she was pushing this girl to find her a husband and have a baby to put to carry on the, this uh this uh, uh line i guess her her daughter wasn't really equipped her daughter did some pretty silly things so we don't know what the story was there but the product the product is still well maybe a lot of people use it now I, i'd imagine it's been stolen hundreds of times by now <clears throat> i didn't think T tiffany haddish was effective in that role she seemed very modern in that she didn't seem period at all whereas all the other women look period tiffany she seemed, i didn't know if she's a looks like a big woman Anyway, she, she seemed too modern for that role to me. I don't know. I wish they had used music from that time instead of rap music. Yeah, that might have created more of the atmosphere. That's not true. That's not actual story. Okay, Lady T says, I'm a history buff, and that not true, that not the actual story. Okay. Well, hopefully they got some of the perimeters right. The basis. They always say based on someone's story. Not this is not her story. This is based on her life, right? So they dramatize and embellish a lot. Yeah, Tiffany just didn't. I didn't, I didn't feel it. And she should have looked a little bit more like her mama, I think. She towered over her mother. Those her parents are a... I would think, I always thought it was a con job. I used to wonder why my mother buying this stuff. I don't remember what the product was called, but she always wore, had hair growth stuff as far as I can remember. I don't remember no, no, no magical hair growth though. Of course you got to go with the hair, what the hairstyles are. So some people growing it long is not going to benefit them. If the hair is, they want to wear the hair short. Uh, blights, disasters, and kidney disease, they would. They wouldn't treat us. They wouldn't treat us for kidney disease. Okay, so you're saying, uh, Fifi Ole, the many my ancestors died from Bright's disease, aka kidney disease. They wouldn't treat us. Okay, they they felt like it was a waste of time. But she was a very wealthy woman. I would think that if even if they weren't treating up black people, they might have treated the first black millionaire, first black woman millionaire. She could have bought if it was available. I mean, now you can get kidney transplant. You got to go to jump through all kind of hoops to get there. And many times they don't, uh, by the time you finally get, get up top of the list, you're already dead. Uh, she had a transplant? Wait a minute. Okay. Cheryl, my mom. Okay, who's Cheryl? Let me eavesdrop on y'all's conversation. I got the ease drop. Most hair care products are a veritable, veritable con. Okay. Cheryl, my mom had a transplant. Hair transplant or kidney transplant? I had a friend who was over here. I thought he was going to be dead. <clears throat> and he had a kidney transplant and it's thriving. It's been about two years. I got kidney issues myself from all these damn drugs. So let's hope it don't end, end in disaster. But there are are ways to treat pretty much everything now. To treat treat it doesn't mean you can cure it. Uh, let me see. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Groupon girl. Groupon girl says, Groupon girl, beautiful disaster. Why oh, you a beautiful disaster? It wasn't a gr a growth. Uh, they used the wrong verbiage. It was releasing the curl that made it look longer. Oh, they didn't say anything about that. They called it hair my hair growth thing, right? They even named it my hair growth product. Okay. So you you saying you have to have hair? No such treatment in 1911. Boy, that was way back, wasn't it? 1911, early 1900s. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, you have to get on a list to get a kidney transplant. So, they I, I have kidney disease myself, but not enough where I can get on the list even. So, you're gonna have to go through a lot of dialysis and all the whole jump through the, all the loops hoops before you can actually make it to the top of the list. It's not supposed to be prejudiced about money, but of course, everything in this country is predicated. Truvada will help stop the coronavirus. James Boss, I ain't believing nothing until I see it. You know, Trump is, he's trying to get it over with so he can get back to business. He's trying to get to shore up this, uh, the economy before the election. So he's talking about putting people going back to work. Everything is cool now. We've only been, what, seven days? That's a miracle. Yep, his presidency ended up with a. This is just like, almost like he a war attacked his his uh, his presidency, his administration. So this is what he's going to be judged by, how he handled the coronavirus. And this, so far, all the reports are terrible. As far as him, his reaction to this, how he put off put off even acknowledging that that it was a pandemic. Okay, we'll see. Truvada is for HIV, but it's also very toxic to your kidneys. No. Yeah. Truvada. That's got the, the, the main thing in it is Truvada is the ingredient in these PrEP drugs, right? I used Truvada for about a year. And at the end of that year, the, the doctors told me that the Truvada had caused me 50% of my kidney function. That's why I have kidney issues now. Although I haven't had any symptoms, you can live with one kidney. But Truvada. Is dangerous for people, people with compromised immune systems, right? So I guess if you, because my concern was putting these young kids on Truvada, they're in their twenties, and then they're going to be on this drug forever. So what condition are the organs going to be in later on in their life, right? They're taking this drug so early. But from what I'm hearing now, they're saying that if you have healthy kidneys, in other words, you don't have any underlying problem. People with HIV who already have Compromised immune systems, Truvada could be a problem as far as your kidneys. But if you are healthy, so they check you, I believe, every three months. But eventually, you, you go, it's going to affect your kidneys. From what I, my experience has been, and the experience of people that I've known, I mean, obviously, I know a lot, of, a lot of people with HIV, several of them ended up with kidney problems based on this Truvada. Now, I don't know if they do something else with it in prep, but that is the, the primary ingredient. I know a lot of a lot of black women, a lot of lesbian women. You know, I go to church where a lot of lesbian women and so forth. Their hair looks great, and it's usually short. It's just short, corrupt, well-groomed hair, and they don't have all these wigs and stuff. But it just depends on your style. If you're a girly girl, you know, you might want to have long flowing. I don't know. I, I don't try to get in women's business about all that stuff. I see it's mostly fashion. Probably ten years from now, we'll be doing something totally different. Who knows? There, maybe everybody's here to be bald then. But uh, your hair doesn't have to be long in order to be beautiful. Look at Halle Berry. She always has short hair. Yeah, that's what they do with HIV. They, they use a drug until they see it's causing you adverse effect, and then they switch you to something else. So you got to keep checking everything. Okay, studies have shown that Okay. Yeah, it says it's slightly more toxic to black people for whatever reason. But I think the primary thing is people who are already HIV positive, that, that was a, a, a primary drug, right? Dravada. And it caused you all kinds of problems in your kidneys. If you are a healthy person, so they need to be doing research, because there's a lot of lawsuits now about Travada. But people are opting to use that as a prophylactic. So at some point, is that drug gonna damage their, their body, their kidneys? I don't know. I don't, I don't think I have, I haven't been convinced that it won't. I know I didn't gain my damn uh, kidney function back. Fortunately, so far, there's no symptoms of that. Oh, they had high blood pressure. I got me a dose of that too. 
Okay. Lesbian has nothing to do with short hair or whatever. In your yes, it does, baby. I'm sorry, uh, ladies. T. Of course, you don't have to be a lesbian to have short hair. A lot of black women have short hair. A lot of women have short hair. That's not. It's not a prerequisite. But I'm just saying that if you look at a lot of lesbian women, most of them have short hairstyles. They, they got they, what they call lipstick lesbians, which are feminine lesbians. They might have long hair, and the other person might have shorter hair. Not to say that it, it's, it's like a man cut or anything like that. They just have shorter styles, less makeup on a lot of them. But that doesn't mean, of course not. My mom got short hair. Actually, Lady T, my mom looked just like you. <laughs> Light skin with that kind of hairstyle. No, that does not make you look like a lesbian. I'm just saying that there are many style, hairstyles uh, that look good that are they're not long. You know, some people wear wigs that are short hair, you know. They tie the hair up and put it in and then put a shorter wig. It's, it's hairstyles. I mean, it's, it's a womanly thing. I, I'm just talking about it because of this movie. Uh, your girly girl self. She said, I look good anyway, honey. Excuse me. <laughs> Fifi, I understand. I do understand people wanting to be, just be able to change the hairstyle. Like, you know. People get good weeds and all that kind of stuff. So high pressure is a that can kill. So high blood pressure. Okay, this is from Alan Christina. So high blood pressure is a symptom that can kill with this thing. This is what uh, uh, Chocolate Bay said. Underlining conditions. That would be one of the conditions, I guess. But is it treated high blood pressure? I mean, my pressure is always, it always registers as normal because I take a, a drug that, that that keeps it normal, you know. I just don't eat a lot of salt and take this one pill a day and I seem to be fine. So probably as long as you, if, 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 if you're, oh God, I'm struggling with words. So long as your high blood pressure is treated, it'll probably be less of an issue for you. Remember, high blood pressure used to kill a whole lot of black people before they came up with drugs and ways to treat it. Yeah, okay. Just being Charlene Kane. You're right. Long hair looks great on some people. Short hair looks great on some people. Some people they look good in wigs. Some people look look good with the uh, uh, a good weave kind of thing. You know that's that's your choice, honey. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm just saying that hair, not, it, it's not all about hair growth. You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of styles. Uh, faith is the substance. It's not about the length of the hair, Uncle Tim. It's about style and the concept of. Uh, reinventing ourselves. I don't understand why some men are so critical about that's Tommy Asutumayo. <laughs> don't judge us all by Tommy Asutumayo. I largely think it's a it's a female issue, so I try to talk about it. I'm only talking about it because I, I'm watching this movie, and I, I mean I just finished it a, a, an hour ago, and it's about hair. That's what, what the subject is. So. You know, some men, I don't like no weave. I don't want natural hair. What, stop making excuses. You don't want your white woman. <laughs> she take her hair off, then you complain about how short her hair is. I don't know. Oh, damn. High blood pressure and kidney disease. You I go outside for nothing. Child, I just gave you a couple of things. Groupon, beautiful girl, disaster. Beautiful. Groupon, girl, beautiful disaster. Oh, damn high blood pressure and kidney disease, you better not go outside for nothing. That's only the beginning of the list, honey. People think getting old is just about, oh, I got high blood pressure. Oh, I got, uh, this one got a kidney disease. Oh, this one got that. No, sometimes you get a dose of it all. That's just what it is. I'm 61 years old. We have to start off with HIV. I mean, I've had it for 30 years, right? That are nearly, that would be primary, but when it came out with the medication, HIV took a back seat. Now I got to worry about all this other stuff. So it's not about one thing. You might be losing your mind at the same time your kidneys are going, you know. 
I don't know. I consider myself blessed that I'm relatively healthy at, at my age. But yeah, so is outside real dangerous? Because I know they're, they're, they're upset with these people on the beaches, these kids. So I guess, is is it actually in the air outside is what I'm curious about. Because I, I would think that when you were outside in the fresh air, you wouldn't be able to contact it. So why is it concerned with the beaches, though? Perhaps because it's just a gathering of people. But the gathering of people inside somewhere, you're breathing the same air, is totally different than when you're outside, I would think. I don't know. I try to get some masks. that They're totally out everywhere. Sanitizer's gone. Masks are gone. But I did give me another box of 100 gloves. So you got to get what you can get. <laughs> Candace Smith. Candace Smith says, <laughs> Uncle Tim, any words for a five baby coming out of the closet licking her newfound carton? <laughs> I thought I heard the same thing, honey. I thought she said she was coming out of the closet. I heard that in one of her videos. So I I don't I don't know enough. Is she out now or, or is she? saying that she's bisexual or whatever it is. I'm sure there'll be a lot more discussion about that, but that didn't get past me either. We don't know what's going on with Miss Five Babe. She's not a married woman though, but you know, a lot of people are single. They can't tell if it's just surface that virus. They told me that it's on surfaces and that's what I've been going by. So I wear gloves because I'm touching things, you know. But as far as breathing air outside, I mean, there are very few people even on the streets. But uh, some people are wearing masks outside. And they don't like the, the, those kids crowding on those beaches spring break. In the air from when I... In the air uh, in, in, in a closed building or in the air outside even. If it's in the air outside, we all doomed, honey. We all doomed. We all got to breathe. James Boss said he, he made his own desanitizer. We're giving them the ingredients, James Boss. I heard it was alcohol and some kind of uh, aloe vera or something. Certainly alcohol is the main thing. But they're going to run out of that too. First goes the sanitizer, then goes the rubbing alcohol. So you guys might want to stock up on it. <laughs> living beyond 60 65 is such a blessing you better believe it you better believe if somebody diagnosed with hiv in 1986 and ain't that something those mystery years when i when there weren't no drugs and i'm still alive and doing dope so it's all a blessing now all these years is just wonderful Okay, coughing and sneezing. If somebody coughs on you and sneezes on you, okay. My dog's always coughing in my face. I hope he don't get nothing. There's a video just made that shows how the earth has cleaned itself up without without people huh what do you mean beverly crump the earth uh has cleaned itself up without people well if people were gone it probably would be clean it probably be fabulous we're the one building all these machines that pollute the air right uh, hey nicole reload it Okay, some people have always been social distancers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't get up on top of people anyway. I guess I'm just a loner. I have a couple of close friends. And of course, I have my church friends and my, and my volunteer friends and different things that I do. I know them from those places. I know you guys from here. But I, I, I think I'm a loner. 
Yeah, I don't know. I ain't hugged up a lot of people. And certainly you guys who are sitting out there still making love and, and jumping around online and all that kind of stuff, you better be careful where you put your mouth. You might have to put all that on hold for a little bit, honey. Sacrifice. Yeah, I understand, uh, Linda B. I lost to pretty much everybody I knew that time. At that time, it only took uh, two or three years and you were gone. Okay, hey, I do wish I had some. <laughs> I do. Cheryl R. Lath. Lath? What do you say? Bless that heart. I do wish I had someone to social distance with, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. If you have somebody in the house with you, that might make things a whole lot better, you know. Y'all can just stay in the house and stay cuddled up. Yeah, forget all that cuddling with the strangers for a while, honey. It ain't worth your life. You know, I stopped when I stopped having sex eons ago, I stopped getting colds, flus, and everything. Because the people were, they were more of a danger to me than I was to them because they bring things with them, you know. They got a little sniffle, then you got a little sniffle. So, I mean, there are benefits to just being single. Yeah, I feel you, Beverly Crump. In other words, no cars, no factories running, no trash on the ground. That's right. Air will be cleaner without us. Of course, Donald Trump says it's all a hoax. Everything's just fine. <laughs> People, when you make your decision about when you're going to become social again, don't base it on what Donald Trump says, please. Let him go off and let the doctors come on and tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cootie, oh. <laughs> No sex, all over cootie protection. <laughs> y'all be putting your mouths. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, God did not create to be alone, but we can be alone for a couple of months. Trust me, I know. This is an unusual situation. Who I sure wish I had glued my grill in before I started this thing. They're about to let go. They about to let go. If you got grilled, they got to have used adhesive in it. It only lasts one day. So you got to uh, take care of your business before you come online. Now, I know certain people will take that and run with it, and I'll be hearing about it all month. Let me see. I think we kind of get set in our ways, though. So I'm not saying it's better to be alone, but I'm saying that you can get used to it. If you get too used to it, then you, you, you're you not open for anybody coming into your life, you know. Like, whatever somebody over there sitting in the bed, I'll have to entertain that person or, or be involved with that person in some way. We would have to make a decision on what we wanted to watch on television, things like that. You would have to make a decision about when we turn the lights on, when we turn the lights off. That's normal when you share your life with somebody. But when you ain't been doing that for 30 years, it, it might be a challenge, honey. You can get used to it. Uh -huh. Alone and lonely. Lonely comes up comes up every few months. You might have a few days where you're lonely. You might want somebody in your life. For me, it doesn't last very long, though. I've learned to pay attention. Okay, no matter what I'm feeling, oh, I feel depressed right now. Okay, how long do you feel depressed? In the morning, are you still saying you're depressed? Okay, there's one day. The next day, are you still feeling Oh, I don't remember what I was depressed about. So two days your range on average, you know. So I don't get all tripped in that. That's why a lot of people end up on dope too. You're trying to fix yourself, make yourself feel better. So it might be alcohol, might be whatever, eating food, too much food, whatever. Make yourself feel better instead of just waiting it out. You've been single for four years. Count your blessings. 
I'm a little cynical. Forgive me. Danny Davis. I'm a big fan of you, Mr. Tim. Uh, stay safe. I'm about to purchase your book. Yes, purchase them. I think you guys are going to love that 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 um, that series, though, Love and Gospel Music. If you like to read fiction, if you don't want to read a whole series, just get the epiphany. And that, that should draw you in to the story, you know. But thank you. Life is a blessing. You're right about that. We got to ride this thing out. I know what it feels like to survive something. Feels good. You feel blessed and grateful. Miss C says, I'm alone, but never lonely. You women have another benefit. You have children, usually. You have children. Somebody's going to love you for the rest of your life. As a single person with no children, no wife, no past, no nothing, I am truly single. Now, I could put a little more time into getting to know, I mean, going back to Indiana, visiting people and stuff. I don't know. I'm just setting my ways. But sometimes I wonder, when you're wondering what love is, then you watch your young mother and her baby. I said, that's love. That's love. Ain't nothing going to happen to that child. Yeah, it'd be great if I met somebody. I'm, I'm still open to that. He would have to come and knock on my door, though. I, I ain't going out there looking for him. <laughs> I ain't be hanging around no bars looking lonely and pitiful. Get, especially since I don't drink. Nope. I am not going online having no strangers coming on here telling me, oh, you too old. Oh, you too fat. I ain't doing that. I've been there. It's just not that big a deal for me. I am extremely cynical. <laughs> well, y'all saw how the relationships went in, 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 in Madam's uh, life, right? Dirty dogs. So they really pushed the colorism theme. But I think it's legit. It's a big deal for a lot of people. Hmm. Part of your lives, you... We'll do well sticking with topic. Okay. Lily in the Valley says you would do well sticking with topics. Okay. Hey, Uncle Tim saying hello from the skybox. And I like the topic part of your lives. You would do well sticking with topics. Yeah, I've heard that before. Have a topic. You know, don't just go on here and just, how y'all doing? What's going on? Although the live experience is part partly that too, you know. But uh, if you have a topic and nobody wants to talk about it. You know, that's just what it is. Go with the flow. I do. I'm surprised I even like live though. I was one of the last people to even get involved in it because all my videos were, were uploads, you know, but I, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. And yes, the YouTubers did get paid today. Usually they get it 22nd. I guess that was a Sunday. Okay, wait a minute. Nicole Reloaded. Okay. Oh, that's nice. The biography. Thank you, Nicole Reloaded. That's a nice little brief bio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that everyone is home, my phone rings. Your phone rings. Oh, I cannot talk on the phone, though. And sometimes I cut people off because I know they want to talk and talk and talk. And some gay men are just like girls. I mean, no offense, but they can talk on the phone forever. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm just not a telephone person. Usually, if I call somebody, you know, how you doing? What, what happened today? Or I'm on my way, or where you at? Whatever, something like that. But I am not no long phone talker. Mm. Okay. Hold on, let me see. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. <laughs> I like varied topics. That's why I come on. I literally said to my daughter, 
Hold on, let me see what Uncle Tim talking about. <laughs> Is there any scandal in his mouth? <laughs> yeah, you guys seem to be fine with with the, all this hair talk kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. If I was a woman, I probably have long flowing locks too. Change it from blonde, <laughs> red one day, whatever. Have some fun with it. Oh, no. Roxbury says, I hated the movie. They really played up on these tired old tropes of evil, light-skinned girls. So we're, oh, wait a minute. Where is that at? Of uh, evil, light-skinned girls. So we're supposed to believe that in the 1800s, every foe was a light-skinned girl, not white people. <laughs> Uh, Roxbury, are you a light-skinned girl? Our family had all co I call colors, right? So it was never an issue. As far as I know, it was never an issue. Only issue we had was I used to tease my one sister. But uh, we had all, all hues of people from the same mother and father, you know. So, yes, they did kind of make the uh, colorism thing like the light-skinned girl was a bad person. But that was because that particular person was uh, not a good person. She ended up crying in the end, being sorry that she didn't partner with this woman. But people are saying in the actual story, they did work together. So I don't know. I thought it was entertaining, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Almond Brown, 09. I paused my Netflix series to watch Uncle Tim. Oh, ain't that sweet? What's going on here? What did they? The president, I can't watch that man. Good girl, y'all don't understand. Y'all don't believe me when I say I cannot listen to Donald Trump. It's all it's all lies. It's all conjecture. It's all, it's all made up. So whatever he says, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything at all. After they listen to the commentators break down and fact check everything he says. I mean, this man is proof over and over and over again that everything he says is a lie or tried to fit his political agenda. So I, I have a very, very hard time listening to that dude. That's the weakest part of the whole news program for me. Why you got to have a whole bunch of people behind him because ain't nobody listening to him. I don't know why these people decided that a reality star was good enough to be the president. When Barack Obama talked, he was brilliant. You listen to your hung on every word. This dude, he's going to get more and more desperate as that damn uh, election gets closer, right? More and more dangerous antics of his. Mm. You know, I, I'm not, I don't buy this thing that a lighter skin is more beautiful. I really don't buy, buy that. Because all, all the features that go into making someone beautiful is not just the skin color. I think a lot of times you, you end up with light-skinned people on television because they probably film better. It's probably easier to get their features on film. But because you're light-skinned does not make you attractive. You can be an ugly motherfucker. And, not I mean, all this video without this foul language, you can be a, a very unattractive person and have very, very light skin. Right? Or you can be very dark skin and just be beautiful. Ask Tyler Perry about these dark <laughs> dark and lovely <laughs> men. <laughs> orange face. Why are you still having an orange face? You're the president. Still sitting on tanning beds. Nobody looking at you, Trump. You don't look good no matter what you do. So forget the orange face, honey. Well, usually they won't get you if you, if you cuss one time. You can go a whole thing without well, only one cuss word. You're doing all right. Oops, Tyler Perry. <laughs> I'm just saying he knows how to appreciate men of different hues in his productions. Women, too. But he's like, he's better with women's emotions 
and men's physicality. Let's say it like that. Y'all remember how mad Tyler Perry got when that pose pause came out with the boondocks? <laughs> he got all that banned, you know. It was, I think there was, there was some. Never mind. Let me leave it alone. You see the baby? Say hello, Squeenie. Hey, ding dong ding. In the ding dong ding. In the ding dong ding. <laughs> well, you pat my head, Daddy. Give me another pat. He don't fear his dad. He know whenever his dad put his hand near him, it's for love. I just need a love injection. Right, right. You can be gorgeous and dark skinned. I mean, I feel you, James Voss. Okay, so to, ch to chat to title your next book. Get you writing again. Yeah, writing always came just like it's just. I don't know. I I don't understand writer's block things like that. I just know it, it's a lot of work, but you love it when you're doing it. So I can't explain it. I know one day I'll wake up and just start writing again. Hopefully, hopefully. But I wrote for twelve years every day. Uh, baby, what'd you do? You're in the head now. Daddy got me off a of camera. <laughs> now he's down underneath me. <laughs> We need a hot dog. Well, hot dogs make them fart. I learned that with my other dog. I ain't giving them no hot dogs. Although this dog only eats chicken. He only he never eat he never even tasted dog food as far as I know. Well, when I got him, he was three years old. So if I don't give him chicken and I don't put a little cheese on top, he won't eat it. <laughs> Don't that hurt? Only love me when I have food. You got to trick them. Because they know we're weak, honey. We need the love. The internet is a huge distraction from writing. You're right about that, Cheryl. Because two weeks before I started YouTube, I finished the book two, week, two weeks later. Earlier. Right? I started doing this. Just lost interest. That plus I... Bought a new computer, and it didn't have Word on it, so I was got I got out of the habit of writing every day. It's almost like when you go to the gym. If you go to the gym uh, every day or every other day, and you never miss, you never make excuses. Then, if you go on vacation or something like that, it's hard to get back into it, and you break that routine. You know, a lot of tissue. I have lots of toilet paper. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm covered in that. I have, I've been avoiding going to the store. I said, well, why go and expose myself if I don't really need anything in the store? So I'm trying to run down the supplies that I have now before I go back in there. But I did go and get some gloves today. I have an albinos, seven-month-old Maltese. Ooh, I bet that's beautiful. Pink nose and all. I bet that's a cutie pie. I spoiled the other chicken with dog with other dog with chicken and this one as well. They both ate chicken. They love chicken. He lived to his full life. He lived 15 years. So I guess it was okay. Somebody, some people say, well, put rice in there. But I think rice is just to expand you. You ain't got to spend so much money on, on meat. But uh put carrots or something in there. Uh, Squeenie is spelled Queenie. With the S. Queenie is uh Q U E E 
N Y, right? So put an S in front of it and then Squeenie. Squeenie. Y'all wouldn't believe I used to call a grown man that, right? <laughs> my lover, my only real lover. I had a couple of boyfriends, but my only real lover. His name was Jimmy. So my last dog name was Jimmy, right? So when I got a new dog. I wanted, I like the idea of calling Jimmy. It, it reminds me, uh, I like it in my mouth. Because it reminds me of my one time of really loving somebody. Anyway, he was a dog lover. He got me into dogs. So I always wanted to honor him by calling my dog his name. So when I got the new dog, I couldn't call him Jimmy because that's, that's so impersonal. He needed his own name. So I called him what I used to call my partner in the privacy of our own home, which was Squeenie. <laughs> yes, we had pet names. Well, I had a pet name for him. He just called me Tam. <laughs> A little chicken broth. Yeah, that works too. A little chicken broth. But now it's all chicken. You can't have dog food with a little broth on it. Something to add a little flavor to it. But I've tried to switch him to dog food. He ain't going for it, honey. He can starve himself. Now, people say, well, if you leave it there, he ain't got nothing else to eat. Eventually, he'll eat it. I don't want a, a dog, my dog to eat stuff that he's forced to eat. I want him to be happy when he eats. Like his daddy gets happy when he eats. Mm -hmm. I don't like this title, honey. What is the title? Oh, about the hair thing? I think everybody's watching that, that little documentary. So, it's, I don't mean it as an insult. I mean, it's a woman's issue, but that's what the movie's about. It's about hair. So it seems to me that you can put this stuff on your hair. You can just grow it all over, you know, you can just perm it, whatever. But even if people that do grow long hair, that, that does not necessarily mean that they wouldn't want, still prefer a wig. If they like a certain styles, you know, they make them they have such quality now. You know, I ain't tripping on that. I, I don't have no judgment about that, honey. I am not no Tommy Asutumayor. He goes on and makes hour-long videos about hair, so that's not who I am. If the movie was about airline airline pilots, then I'd be talking about airline pilots, right? Yeah, I'm careful. I'm in here by myself. No, it's not about hair. It's not about... I think the movie is about her... her her products were hair care products, but it's really about business and her growing that business. Because from what I heard, particularly from this girl called Nick at Night, apparently a lot of uh, products had those same ingredients. So she didn't necessarily steal it from the, from the other woman. But uh, I think it's primarily about her growing a business at that time when it was almost unheard of for a black woman to do so well in this country. Mm-hmm. Right. Sometimes you just want long hair, long hair, short hair. You might want blonde hair or white hair. Let me see. You don't need to explain. Well, I don't want to uh, upset my mods or my, or my subscribers. <laughs> Women empowerment and her story. Read the real story. Okay. That's an idea. Read the real story. What is her real story? Is, is there is there a book? Lady T, you know the name of the book, her of her actual book. I like with real hair, Indian hair, hot dog long hair. Okay. Working conditions, like we had to, I don't know, scalp conditions. Okay, so here we go. Chocolate Bay. I was reading during that time that due to not having an in house restroom, never thought of that angle, and, and the hard conditions, working conditions, black women had a lot of scalp conditions. 
the products help heal your scalp so your hair will grow. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. So he's saying that because of the conditions, because uh, even when I was listening to that girl, Nick at Night today, it was saying that people, because the story was based on her initially losing her hair, right? Ball spots all in the hair and all that. He's saying that because they didn't have good conditions there, certainly no indoor restroom. So what, you wash your hair in the out, outside or something? They had all kinds of conditions. So that's why, maybe that's why this woman had hair salons uh, in addition to her products. It was cleaning the scalp. It was a process, right? But this story made it sound like it was more, it was just more the chemical. Thank you, Chocolate Bay. That makes a lot of sense. So now modern times, if just a person, just a regular person, start using these products, would, it, would their hair grow? Routine, okay. Who did her, this child named her name, Nappy Child? Nappy Child, what'd you say? Her great, great, what was that? Her great, great granddaughter wrote the book that finally brought it to the screen. Okay, so you know the name of the book, Nappy Child? We can give her a little promotion. Right. Well, no story is going to get it perfect because, like I said, it's hard to take a whole life and put it into an hour or two. Tell somebody's whole life story and put it into an hour or two. They have to cut corners. So all these biographies are not exact. Gamage Carter. Gamage Carter, my friend from San Francisco. He says, on her own ground. Okay, the life and times of Madam. Okay, so on her own grounds is this is my editor here, Jamie Carter. On her own ground, people is the name of the book, The Life and Times of Madam C.J. Walker. Lisa Drew Books paperback. Gamage is a, a a book fanatic. You you know you know I'm mad, still at work, still at work. Oh my goodness. Yeah, some people didn't get a break from work. He's one of them. I just worry about the traveling to go to work. I guess people who have cars, they can just drive there. But most people here, they take public transportation. And I look down here, like right now the train is passing, right? Let me show you. Can you see in there? Look at there. This is the train. We're at rush hour now, right? There's not a person on that train. So if they are, they're very few. And they are sitting one per car. Isn't that amazing? And that train is usually packed. This is right in the heart of the rush hour. So those things are the most dangerous of all. Those and buses. Buses are even worse. When you're standing all over people and stuff like that. Plus people are sagging, got their ass all in your, in your face. <laughs> buses are the worst. Uh huh. I hope so. I, I'm gonna write soon. I hope so, honey. Gotta get myself motivated. I just discovered today when I uh turned my Meth Monster into an auto audio book, it started paying off. Right, got all these. It's been selling like crazy for the last six months, mainly because of you guys. But I have four other books, so uh. You have to present them and partner with somebody so that, that the, author, the author and the narrator partner, right? Then you split the money. But you also have the option of you can just pay somebody to read it, pay some pay, pay a professional to read it and make an audio book that way and you get all the profit. So that might be what I'll do next. With, with I really want to get the epiphany. I want to promote it as much as possible. I just think it's, it's just a great book. They're all great books, but I think that one will capture your interest the most. If I wrote another another book, it'd have to be in a different series. 
Now I tried to start to make it a continuation, but at, after the book, uh, the label, the story was just over. It was just over. It's just done. Just like with Empire, you know, you kind of push it out and push it out and push it out. We were all so excited about Empire, but at some point the story was over. It was done. So trying to drag it out more, the quality slips. I think Empire is probably slipped because it's uh, because the uh, they use other writers. No, I don't read well enough to do my own voiceover. I mean, I probably could, but it, uh, I'm not impressed with my my ability. Y'all hear how, how I'm stumble over names and words and all this stuff. Mm. <laughs> I like seeing those cakes when they're sagging, Uncle Tim. What sagging cake? What that? Deshaun, what are you talking about sagging cakes, honey? <laughs> okay. You're trying to read Epiphany via audio book. Okay, well, good luck. <laughs> I think it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple to catch that story without reading the first book. No, I don't read well enough. I mean, I, I, I can read it, that's the issue, but as far as reading uh, out loud, I don't I do not do that well, in my opinion. Yeah. So a lot of people have complained to me, a lot of black people have complained to me that I should have had a black narrator read the book in the audio book, right? But now it's, it's doing extremely well. So maybe it worked out, maybe it reached a bigger audience because it wasn't just exclusively a black book. You know, the book's about meth addiction kind of thing. So I, I, I don't know, it's doing very well. M much better than I ever dreamed it would. I'm dyslexic, so it's hard. That's, that, that, that's the truth, Almond Brown. So it's hard to stay in place. Shall we say? You're always going back and kind of go back and forth and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you're re you're actually reading backwards. That tickles me when I see something. I say, "Damn, I just read the whole line backwards." But it's hard to stay just online, right? So I use machines for all of my reading and all that kind of stuff. Okay, how are we doing? Yeah, we over an hour. Well, I cannot wait. To glow and glue my grill in. It's falling out of my face. So thanks for coming in, guys. Don't take nothing personal. Ain't nobody mad at your wigs, honey. You, you look gorgeous. <laughs> All right, later.